Hey there, welcome to the One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's Garrett here, like always, and in today's video, I want to start out with a very simple question. Has the following scenario ever happened to you guys? And if so, isn't it freaking annoying? Do 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 do, just coming home, want to open my garage. Nothing, nothing, still nothing. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my God, why won't you open? We're literally right up against the door. Anything? Come on, brand new battery, let's go. Come on, come on. You know you wanna. Come on. Come on, you know you want to. Come on, baby. Hey, there we go, great. Finally, into my garage. What a pain in the ass. Well, if so, then I think I might have just the perfect solution for you guys. Let me show you what it is and let's try it out. All right, so the product we're gonna be looking at today is the Genie branded dual frequency conversion kit. And what this is gonna allow us to do is go ahead and use the Genie receiver, which uses IntelliCode technology. Um, basically, it's a dual band system that receives 315 and 390 megahertz signals. And we're gonna go ahead and wire it in and be able to circumvent the factory built-in receiver that's already in our garage door opener motor. Now, a couple cool things about this unit. Number one, it's actually powered by a dedicated AC power source, i.e. a plug, um, you know, similar to how your motor is plugged into the wall. That's gonna allow it to have a better capability of receiving signals from greater distances, more so than your built-in receiver. Now, number two, I already mentioned this, but this one actually is able to receive two bands of a signal or wavelength. Whereas my 15-year-old you know, linear system here, it only receives one type of signal. Um, I believe it's a 318 or so, um, whereas this one will take 315 and 390. And that's cool because by using two different wavelengths as a possibility to receive, it allows you, depending on the environment and your walls and things like that, to have a greater possibility of getting that signal from the receiver or the remote um, to go ahead and kind of connect. And so that's going to be beneficial in actually improving our problem. Now, our problem with that is that the two signals that this Genie receiver will receive, they're different than the signal that this linear system will receive. And so basically, you know, you're not going to be able to use the same remotes on these two systems. So all your, you know, old remotes, if they don't work with the 390 or 315 megahertz system, then those are going in the garbage and you're going to have to use all new Genie or compatible remotes. Now, an even further complication of this is that if you only want it, let's say you've got two garage door openers in your garage, you know, two different doors, and you have one that's a primary one, like this, I'm describing my situation. Um, then basically, I'm only gonna install this in one garage door. However, since the other one will still have this old technology that relies on a different wavelength, I'm not gonna be able to use these same remotes for both doors. Essentially, you know, I have to keep a linear or a 318 megahertz remote for that garage door, and then I can use a 315 or a 390 remote for this new unit with the receiver. And so these are things to kind of consider, you know, as you do this project, what's gonna fit your needs. You may need to install one of these on all of your garages, depending on, you know, if you park your car in different spots, you know, on different days or whatever. I don't know what your guys' situation is. Um, but it's just something to consider that since these are different wavelengths, it's not going to matter on this garage door that I replace it with, but you know, your old you know, um, remotes and your other garage doors, you may have a little bit of an issue. But other than that, this is actually a really nice plug and play, or I should say wire and play system. Um, you know, I'll talk about the wiring later, but this whole thing should only take about 20 minutes or so. It's really simple. I mean, you're going to go ahead and plug it in and do the wiring for that really easy. And then as far as how it's communicating to your motor, um, it's basically going to connect into the same wire that your push button on the wall goes into. So really simple, straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and get started, I think, by opening up the box and seeing what we've got. Now, before we get started, I thought it might be kind of interesting to actually show you guys some previous attempts I had made to go ahead and increase the range for my garage door opener. You know, I had read and watched online, you know, people had good results doing this, but I tried to just extend the antenna, the wire antenna that's built into the receiver in my unit, um, just outside of the house by basically, you know, connecting a wire and running it out the door um, into the clear open air, just to see if that would help improve my range. And really, it made a very, very minimal difference. Um, really didn't solve my problem. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting to show you guys in this clip. Um, you know, things, you know, maybe you could try as a, you know, last resort if you don't feel like spending the 60 bucks or whatever this kit costs. 
um, to go ahead and increase your range. And if it doesn't work for you guys like it didn't for me, then you can move on to using the Genie product. All right, so here's a nice up close look at the box in case you guys want to see the model number and there's some nice pictures of it. And basically I just went ahead and opened it up and here you guys can see it comes with a nice small little remote, some clips holding the wiring, instructions, a little power block transformer thing, the new receiver and some wiring. So that's about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the motor and see, you know, kind of what we're working with on that end. All right, so up here at the garage door opener, basically you guys want to look for where all your terminal connectors are. So on my linear brand, like I said, um, it's on the back. And all you're looking for is you need to absolutely have the push button or wall button terminal, and you need a common terminal. And that's it. We'll go ahead and connect into those guys. And I think the only other thing that I need to go ahead and check before we get started is don't judge me on that whole power situation, but I need to go ahead and disconnect the power to the garage door opener so I don't shock myself. So with that, let's go ahead and start our wiring. All right, so back down here on the ground, we have our brand new receiver here, and it also has three terminals. It's got a power, a common, and a wall button terminal. Um, so basically how the wiring is going to work on this is we're going to have one set of wires going from the power and common up to the transformer that plugs into the wall. Then we're going to have another set of wires going from the common again, and this time the wall button terminal. And those are going to go to the wall button terminal and the common terminals on the actual opener unit. So let's go ahead and get that set up and go from there. Also, I almost forgot, but you'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver to go ahead and loosen up the terminals on the new receiver. And we're going to need a set of wire strippers to go ahead and strip the wire ends to go ahead and wire everything up. But other than that, we should be good to go. All right, so you guys can see I already have everything wired up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and run through everything in detail so that way you guys can do this at home nice and easy. So let's start with the wiring going from the new receiver to the motor unit. All right, so for our first set of wires, we're gonna go ahead and start down here at the motor and tap into our push button and our common terminals. And they're already gonna have wires connected in there, you know, for other things that the garage needs to be able to function. And so we're just gonna go ahead and add our new wires into those and make sure it's still a solid connection, not disrupting anything else. Then we're gonna go ahead and run that wire up to our new receiver and connect them to the corresponding correct terminals. So the one down here that says common, we're gonna go ahead and connect that common wire up there. And the one that says push button, we're gonna connect to the wall button up there. Now to keep our wiring consistent and easy to follow, pretty much for this whole system, any wire that's connected to a common terminal, that's gonna be solid white. And then either our power or our wall button wires, those are gonna be the striped ones or the ones that have the black writing on them. Just to keep everything consistent and we don't mix anything up. All right, so once we have our wiring ran from the new receiver to the motor, it's time to go ahead and hook up the power source to our receiver by going ahead and tying in the transformer or power block. All right, so I have my power block here and I have it just sitting like this just so it's not putting too much stress on the wire since I already have them connected. But on this one, it's super easy, unlike the rest of the wiring where it actually mattered, you know, having the same wires connected, you know, here, here, and matching it up to terminals on the receiver. This one, it's really doesn't matter. So, you know, take your wire piece and connect, you know, one end to one terminal and the other end to the other terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and climb up a step on the ladder up here on the receiver, in no particular order, take one of those ends and connect it to the power, and take the other end and connect it to the common. And so just like that, you've got everything nice and wired up. Took you, what, 10 minutes at max? And then just go ahead and screw it into the wall. You know, I think you could probably attach it to this, you know, metal scaffolding that you guys probably have your motors attached to. Um, or maybe that's just us because we have really tall ceilings in our garage. But either way, you know, I just think it's a nice clean look having it up there on top. But whatever your preference is, I just think having it somewhere solid where it's not going to get jiggled all the time with the motor running would probably be a good idea. But at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in, and then I think we can go ahead and program our remote. All right, so now that we have everything wired up and we have our transmitter ready to go, we're just going to go ahead and press the learn button once. It's going to flash. We're going to press this button on the remote. It should stop flashing but stay illuminated. We'll press it one more time to lock in the code, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and try. Press that learn button. It's flashing. Press the button we want to program. All right, and press it again. And we should be learned. Now, if I go ahead and come down here, past all of our wires, and crawl down the ladder, we should be able to press this button and have this remote work. Success! Good job. All right, so now that we know our remote actually works, and it's synced up and all perfect. Let's go ahead and try it in the real world, and let's go out into the street. Okay, so I'm about to pull in my driveway here in a second. I want to test out the new range with the Genie receiver. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and press the button down here. Let's see if it works. Okay, click. 
Hey, that's not bad. Okay, that's pretty good. All the way down here. I mean, you know, we've got like a double depth driveway and that was, I'd say like another half house down the street. And uh, as you guys can see, it's very responsive. Let's give it a nice solid click. And uh, yeah, way better than the original receiver where I had to be actually like pulled right up against the garage door. That is a thing of the past because now we've got the little genie here and uh, yeah, genie saves the day much, much better. Yeah, it's got a little delay for some reason, but other than that, yeah, definitely a major improvement. Big thumbs up. I like this a lot. Also, I don't know why it's closed that. I need to get in there now. So yeah, I consider this product and this project a complete success. Now, I know it might sound a little bit lame, but honestly, I'm so stoked about this. You guys don't understand. Like, you know, this problem has plagued us since we moved into this home. And finally, just being able to come up to the garage door, not even come up to the garage door, being able, you know, down the driveway to click the button and have it open and not have to be driving right up against the door like I used to. And, you know, pressing the button on the remote is being so frustrated and irritated. Honestly, this is like, it's a minor thing, but it's one of those things when you do it every single day, you want it to work well. And finally, Jeannie, thank you guys so much. This actually works well. And definitely if we have to replace these motors someday, I'll go with the Genie because they actually make products that work well, you know, from the factory. So not nice. Um, but anyhow, off that soapbox, I hope you guys found the video helpful and hopefully you guys like the results that I got and maybe you guys will try it in your own garage, who knows? But if you do, then hopefully this will help you guide you into the quick and easy installation. Um, you know, it's just five minutes or so, really. It's just a quick connect of a few little wires, not a big deal. You guys can definitely do this in your own homes. You know, don't hire an electrician or a garage door guy. You guys got this. I got I, full confidence. Uh, but anyhow, if you guys want to see more videos of me, usually working on the cars, the 2016 Grand Cherokee, the 1977 Cadillac Eldorado, the 1999 C5 Corvette, and the 1988 Pontiac Fiero, then please subscribe to the channel One Brain, Four Wheels. And who knows, maybe I'll do more things around the house that are kind of car related too. I think, you know, this fits in. It's a garage, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyhow, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your project.